<laughs> All right, guys. Um, this is. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming some of you see me. If you have a video, or if you have a chat box, go ahead and um, click in that chat box and just say that you are that you are here. And there should be a little comment if you're on a laptop and you go over to the left side of your screen, you'll see a, um, a little chat box. And just click on that, and then you can write in your name. Let's see if that works. There we go. Hey, Rajana. Um, Shelly, are you there? And Amanda. Rajana, since I can see you, or at least see you there, can you write in the box? There we go. Okay, I want to help Amanda get on and Shelly be able to see. Oh, there's Amanda. Yay. Hey, Amanda. Go ahead. Yay. Amanda, do you have a microphone? Um, go ahead and click it on. There's just a few of us, so that's that's fine. Let's see if I can click you on. Do you see the chat box? Okay. <laughs> um, up in the top left, you can see a little um, to the left of the the monitor thing. You'll see these little pop-outs, and there's one that looks like a comment box. Yay, there we go. Hey, Shelly. Perfect. And and so, Shelly, uh, we can see you, but we can't hear you, right? We can't hear you, right? Right. Well, can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Then we're good. Perfect. All right. So, Amanda, let's see if we can get you up and running. Um, up at the top, do you see a little microphone with a line through it? Click on that. Um, I can't hear you, so do you see the comment box to the right side? Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so Amanda, I can tell you can hear me, so it might be that your microphone is not connected to your you know, to your Google Plus. And are you on a Mac or a PC? Okay, I will go on. Um, PC, where you can find it is in your settings, I believe. <laughs> right, Jan, I saw your eyes light up there. <laughs> so, there's a... I'll let you play around with that, and sometime, Amanda, if you want to test that out, I'll either get you connected with Rajana, you see down at the bottom, and you guys can test out those things so that next time you know, we can actually see you. And then Shelly, who didn't think you had a microphone, you're, you're going live. Hey, cool. Hello, Annette, how are you? Annette, do you have a microphone? All right. Annette, can you hear me? Wave your hand if you can hear me. There you go. Hi. Hi. I was just trying to use a better microphone. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I, I figured, you know, this time it's actually a great opportunity because it's a very uh, small group of us. We may have a couple more people um, join in. But a good time kind of work that out as well as, as do a do a thing. But 
what a great opportunity to be able to meet wherever we're at. I actually had, there's one gal, Melody Fawcett, who really wanted to be on, but I didn't think about Australia time zone. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning and she's teaching right now, so <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> but um, as a general rule, is uh, Shelly and uh, Annette, is Sunday afternoon probably a good time for you guys? The best for me, I yeah. guess. Okay, and Shelly too, okay. And Amanda was nodding her head, great. So Amanda, just don't, yeah, great, just use that chat box to the side. Um, Shelly and... Um, Annette, do you see the, the group chat box to the right side? Have you found that yet? Uh, group chat. Um. So if you hover to the left side of the screen, you'll see these pop-outs. Mm. Uh, and up at the top, it looks like a little blue chat box. Click on that. Shelly found it. Okay, I, I think I found it. Yeah. So did a white screen pop on the right-hand side? Yeah. Okay. So that makes it nice because if I'm talking about something and, and what you noticed is that um, every time somebody makes a sound in their room, the screen pops and makes that person really big. So like if I, you know, if I click a coffee cup or the dog barks or somebody talks in the room, then that makes whoever's the loudest person pops into the big screen. Um, so there's a couple of ways to control that, and we might experiment with that. Like I can click on one of your faces, and now that face is the main thing. So if you want to keep it from doing that, um, then you can just click on on my face or somebody else's. So that's it. So right now I'm assuming are all of you seeing me in the big screen? Yep. Okay. Cool. And um, when we get into a dialogue, what I've done is I've clicked on my own picture because I think that will freeze me up at the top. But then if we get into a conversation and, and somebody else has something, you know, like sharing a great idea, then I'll unclick that and I'll click that, that person to kind of help control that. Um, does that make sense? Okay, kind of get, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. Um, and if you're afraid of, like if you have sounds in the background, Rajana has uh, young children in her house, so she never knows when they're going to wake up or cry or whatever. So you'll notice she has a little microphone muted on purpose so that she can listen, but if something unexpected happens, it won't take over the screen for everybody in the room. So that's, <laughs> that's what's there. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Which I can see is, is uh, might be happening too. Amanda, I got to keep all of you guys straight. So, very cool. Well, I will dig in. Um, did you have any troubles getting on? Any any questions about actually getting on to Google that you want to answer? We'll just do that first. Go ahead and chat in the box so I know. Everybody's. I love Amanda's thing. Yes, 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 Amanda. Cool. Just trying their best way to learn exactly right. Yeah, trial and error works, and uh, that's what we're doing. So it's fun. Um, I have all kinds of stuff going on, but my main thing that I thought I would share, or I want to ask you guys as well, are you having to deal with incorporating Common Core into your music classroom? Not gung ho yet, all right. And what about you, Shelley? Um, should I attack it? Sure. Or you can okay. say it. You can just say it. It's just a few of us. Oh, okay. Um, we were. Uh, I had a principal two years ago that wanted everybody on board. We have a new principal who's, I think, just helping us to figure it out. And I love your your uh, constructs form that I found. Uh, and I think that's going to help a lot once I begin using it. Yeah. Good, good. And is the buzz, um, how about you, Amanda? Are you having to deal with incorporating Common Core next year? Okay. Um, 
And do you happen to know, are they emphasizing math and English language or just one or the other? That's, that's varying from state to state. Both? Okay. Both. 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 All right, so I'm discovering ways to do that. And um, hopefully, I created a chart. I actually borrowed it from the state of Iowa. We have a really active um, fine arts group at the state level who've been trying to figure this out all along the way. And they came up with the chart. And then it was kind of difficult to read, and I wanted to adapt it a little bit to make sense to me. So I'm going to do a screen share so that you see what I have. All right. There we go. Does that look? Uh, yeah, everybody can see that? So <clears throat> um, is this new news to you, or um, like this is old news? Shelly and Annette, don't feel, I mean, don't, don't, be, go ahead and say something, you're fine. Um, um, this, this makes sense to me. This is kind of where we're at in my school. Uh huh. And how about, um, about, let's see, who did I just talk to? Shelly, right? Um, Annette? Uh huh. I kind of feel out of the loop. I'm a part time music teacher. Okay. Um, Right now, we're just focusing on the wording of questions coming up on state standards. So we're focusing on incorporating the powerful words like um, describe, compare, contrast, so kids yeah. know what that means. So that's where we're at. No, that, that's fine. And that's actually why I'm here, because when this started, um, actually in my school district, they started doing this about five years ago. And they were giving us little chunks, like, let's have a workshop on rigor and relevance. And I had no idea how that fit into anything, you know? And so we'd be doing all these math problems about rigor and relevance, and then my administrator would ask me, so how are you going to include that? And then they would do this other little chunk, and it was their way of uh, trying to give us a piece at a time. But it did not make sense to me because I didn't see the big picture. And that really helped me. And, and so I guess I assumed that that might be helpful even as you go forward and making sense of what they're, like those, those words that you're talking about are part of that. And part of, the, part of the issue is they've created these common core state standards that 45 states right now have adopted. And the whole idea is that if the kids in Idaho move to New Jersey, the expectations of what they should learn in second grade are going to be the same instead of so different. And um, so then they said, okay, well, we need to incorporate this into all of the classes somehow. So I've been digging in deep to this and then trying to bring it back and make it really simple in an effort to make it easier for music teachers to understand when your administrator comes, because every administrator is going to approach it differently. Because there's no standard about how the administrator is supposed to present it unless the school district comes up with it. So that's kind of top down. So in this um, chart in front of you, I divided it, well, the, the state divided it by assessment, and the CCSS is Common Core State Standards, and then instruction. But the part that is adopted officially by every state is the part that's in green. The 21st century skills, is it varies from state to state and district to district. Some of them are using that terminology, and it kind of sounds like what you just described, um, Annette, that that might be what, where they're getting those words, because that's where I've heard those words. Mm -hmm. But let's skip that for now and go over to mathematics. So you see the mathematics bubble. There is a whole list of every single standard for every grade level. And it's overwhelming when you first look at it. But then, um, actually what I'm doing right now is creating a chart and trying to simplify it so at a glance, a music teacher can look across that and not have to know all the nitty gritty details, but just go, okay, today, um, for example, in my sticks book is a, a really relevant example. How many are all of you 
familiar with the Sticks book. I, I know I saw some of you this summer, and some of I, I it's been a, a while. Um, Shelley, were you? Did I see you this summer? No, but I saw the video of you presenting, and so that looks like a good resource. Okay, um, and Annette, Amanda, have have you seen me in a session recently? In yeah, in Bismarck, North Dakota. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have where I'm going, and Amanda, I'm looking. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I just met you in Texas. That was a that was, was wild, guys. I tell you what, Texas conference is incredible. It's straight. There were like 750 people in that room, and we're all trying to do these games. I'm trying to figure out how in the world to get 750 people in a in a small space to, or sit on the floor in a circle to demonstrate the sticks. So uh, that was that was crazy. Um, but anyway, it was a great experience. So I'll try to touch on all of that. So what I'm trying to do is find ways that we are doing what we already do, but by just adding just a tweak and being aware of the Common Core State Standards then we know how, oh, I already, just with one extra question or this one tweak, I can write down that I met this standard in my room. And that's going to help not only you, but it's going to help your administrator because he has the directive top down that he has to infuse Common Core in there. And he's most of the time looking at his fine arts teachers and scratching his head secretly. How am I going to help these teachers do it? So if we already have it kind of halfway figured out, then he's going to love you, um, or at least mine did. He kind of walked in and went, oh, you're already doing it. And, you know, that's, that's great. So that's what I'm trying to do is create tools so others can do that as well. So um, back to this chart in front of me, we got the Common Core State Standards. There's the Math Standards you see to the left a little bit, and the Literacy Standards. Those are solid. You can look them up, you can see what their expectations are for each grade level, and they're pretty basic, um, but it's good to know. <laughs> that, was, that was cool, Amanda. And then the 21st, <laughs> the 21st century skills um, are not talked about um, specifically in the Common Core State Standards. So that kind of varies from district to district. What I love about them is when you follow that bubble down to universal constructs and you see the four C's. You've probably heard of the four C's. Communication, and it's actually complex communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Those and the flexibility, adaptability, productivity, and accountability, we already do all of those in a lot of things that we implement into our classroom. And so now if we just learn that, that lingo and can communicate it um, to the administrator, then great. And if we can infuse those things into math, literacy, and music, then um, we have a really strong position that we can come to our administrator with. And when you look at the far right, where you see that bubble from music, that's something I added. And it presently, I'm using the national music standards for that bubble. Those are going to be officially changed in June of this year. And if you're curious what they look like, um, we're in the middle of a two-week period right now. They, on February 14th, when I was in Texas, um, they opened up the viewing so that you could, you could look at the draft and send comments and feedback. Uh, and I can send you that link. If you want that link to look at it, just email me and I'll send it to you. It looks really different. They're trying to align it with the Common Core, that questioning thing that you're talking about. They're, they're pulling that in. And I just I don't even want to overwhelm you with that. I don't think it's wise to spend a lot of time on that yet because it's not in place. And once it is in place, it's going to take some time before your particular district probably adopts it. And the state's not the state is not going to demand that you adopt it, at least not nationwide. So my feeling is what we need to wrestle with right now is how do we take care of the issue in our own school and answering the question to my own administrator. 
Um, and that's kind of what this, the sticks book is about. Um, so any questions on that before that chart goes away? Does that make sense? Oh, Amanda, I, I need to be reading. Uh, oh, okay, got it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make that one go away and change. All right, so I am back. Um, do you want more information on the Common Core or is it not relevant at the moment? It's your time, guys. You can talk. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> know that there's answers. Here's, here's my question. How Leonard Publishing asked if I would put together a document with a chart where you can look across and you can glance and, and see what's supposed to be covered in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. And then um, ideas of how you might be able to do that in a typical music class. Is that something that would be valuable to you? Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Um, I'll show you. And that's with the new standards? Is that, is that uh, incorporating what the, these new standards are coming out? Or aren't they the national music standards aren't going to change that much? or? They are going to change a lot, and I'm not going to incorporate them yet. And it's, it, I think it's going to be confusing for teachers at first. Here's why. Because they're called the National Core Art Standards with the emphasis on the word core. Those are completely separate. That's their own thing than Common Core State oh, Standards, which are okay. completely adopted. That's, that's the confusing part is... Yeah unless you're a music teacher that's really studying it and who has time to do that, right? I mean, I'm making time to do it, but it's not what I would normally be doing. Um, and if you're in the classroom 24-7 or, you know, doing that, you don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the confusion. So I'm just going to do this book or this, I'm, it's more like a handbook. Where you, my idea is that you can flip it open. Uh, let me see if I can show you. I will in a second. Um, that you could flip it open and glance, and then so when you look at your lesson plan that you already had in place, now you can flip open this chart with the Common Core Math Standards, and you can look across that and go, okay, in the lesson plan that I already have in place, is there any way that I can tie in any of these things? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And then some of those questions that you were talking about. And those universal constructs are a lot of, I, I just love them because they really help, once you put those in place, they really help kids process their thinking. Um, and it actually makes the learning of what you originally had planned to teach richer. So a very simple example, which I think all three of you have watched me do, um, well, Amanda, if you could see me, I don't know, if you were in the back of the room, I don't know that you could see anything in, in Texas. but. Uh, for example, something that music teachers have often done is put sticks in a bag. And then they handed out little baggies to every student. And maybe in every bag there were 10 sticks. Well, throw away the plastic bags and now just dump little piles of sticks in front of kids. And by simply doing that and then asking the, the kids, how many sticks does it take to make this pattern? Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. That changed their whole thinking process. Now they're not waiting on hand to the little baggies to come down. Now they're thinking while the sticks are coming out. And you say, and they're thinking, uh, six, right. Can you count six sticks? Now they're counting. Well, the, the process of counting is a common core math standard at the kindergarten, kindergarten level and first grade level. And um, the processing of how many you're starting to do comparing in the, the sticks book where you have measures and sticks, um, where you're comparing which measures are the same or which boxes are the same and which are different. How do they compare? How are they different? Those are all common core type questions for the processing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
so that's that's ideas of how to take something. You know, I I've always used those games. I've always used sticks because they're great for kids understanding how music uh, how it works and how to notate it. But now by adding that piece, then I had that. So I think you've all seen this. Or Amanda, you may not have seen this yet. Um, so this is kind of a chart that I started to put together, and underneath each Common Core main standard, that's a place you could put in the code of which ones you included in your lesson plan. And then if you created strategies for kids to be able to use critical thinking, complex communication, you just put an X in those boxes, and then you're able to hand this into your administrator. And then the code would be over here, something like uh, Common Core State Standard, dot math dot um, operations and it's, it's OA, I don't know what it's for, and then kindergarten dot one. And that's what you incorporated. I'll show you what that looks like. Do another screen share here. And See if this works. Okay. Um, have you guys all been to this this site? No. Okay. This is a this is a golden site. It this is like the standard of where they all live, and they're actually pretty easy. So the example I just gave you, I'm going to click on kindergarten. I'm going to look at introduction, and it's really laid out pretty well once you get it. Here's a kindergarten overview. In counting, they know the number names and the count sequence. So in that sticks demonstration that I just shared, count to tell the number of objects, compare numbers. All three of those can be incorporated really easily, and it didn't take any away from what I was teaching musically. It made it richer. Mm -hmm. And at kindergarten, they're, they're already thinking about um, Let's take that one step further. Okay, let's just stick with that simple example of the counting. So now I click over here to counting and cardinality to find the code because it's those codes and understanding how those work that's going to make it easy for us to articulate it to our administrator. So that code, here's that same thing I just read to you. Number, no number names in the count sequence. Now you see the actual code. Count to 100 by ones and by tens. So that's the place. So this is the code you would report to your administrator that you incorporated into that lesson. Yeah, that's where it's starting to look familiar because I've seen other teachers' lessons, lesson plans that incorporate that, but nobody told me I had to do that. So like you said, they must just be at a loss with how we're supposed to do that. They are, and, and my concern is it's a twofold concern. There's, there's two platforms. There's a platform that we need to still have people saying, hey, music is of great value all by itself, and we need to include it because it's great for kids. And of course, we as music teachers, we know that. But the reality for the administrator is, when we come in talking about that, they are so overwhelmed about with, they, they are given the duty of to incorporate Common Core into their school district and do it successfully. So that's their big rock that they're worrying about. So now the music teacher comes in and says, hey, music should be music for its own value. They just don't even have room to listen to it. You know, they've got their own problems. But if we can come in with at least a basic understanding and know how to report this in what we do, then we become an answer to his or her problem rather than a thorn in the side every time we walk in the door. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what I'm just trying to get empower and give easy tools that don't overwhelm everybody but make it simple to kind of get it and um, so that's kind of the basics of it is is then I would write down that code and if I'm not sure exactly what that means I can click on well that one's pretty straightforward but the definition is right there if I click on it it's going to say the same thing okay. And I don't think anybody's really going to need to get any deeper than what's spelled out right here on this site. 
I mean, they're pretty. Look at the next one. Count forward beginning from a given number within the known sequence instead of having to begin at 1. That's pretty easy. And we can do that if we had a, a, a measure of music, a little bit older age, and you started at count 2 instead of count 1, you've already you've done this, which we do that in music at the older ages. Well, so. could you even include songs like... Um, he played one, he played Nick that could that be counting? Could that include that same it is. thing? <laughs> yeah, that's where you have to um, yes. And I think that is a different right here. See uh, count to tell the number of objects? Oh. Then that applies more directly to that one, that standard. The B point four. Because understand the relationship between numbers and quantities, and then the key would be like what they're doing. Um, what they're stressing is that for kids, when they just used to do the formulas or like sing that song, it didn't have any relevance. Mm. So that song that you just said, what if you actually had ten sticks ready to go for each kid? So they counted out ten sticks to get the song started. And now every time you sing that verse, they pick up one stick and they get to add another one on the next verse. Okay. Now you've incorporated a song, music, and this concept of content.k.cc.b.4. <laughs> 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 um, so, um, yeah, that's what that is. That's what that's all about. And I was going to show you the chart. So I'll open up one more thing. Where did I go? Sorry. Oh, I hit the blue button instead of the... There we go. Back. Um, so here is a chart that I've started and wanted to see if this would be helpful. And if you guys are interested, then when I get a certain part done, I will just go ahead and share it with you if it's relevant to what you're doing. There we go. Um, okay. Maybe. And maybe not. All right, I may give up on this here. Got it. Okay. So this is actually a spreadsheet format, but for fifth grade, I've just listed what those codes are on the left so they'd be easy to grab, and then the definition to the right, and then my plan is in the next column would be a quick example of what that might look like. So that story, that singing um, story that you just suggested would possibly go in there. Just an idea starter so you would like, oh, I, okay, that would be a way, and then you can start going on. Isn't this fun? Okay. And this this is the handbook then kind of format you were talking about? It is. Okay. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Very. Okay. That's that's my goal. I don't want to do it if it's not going to help anybody because it's a lot of work I'm finding out. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, okay, so great. And what was in it? Oh, storybooks. If you're doing English language arts, mm -hmm. a really great thing to do is connect with your um, connect with your classroom teachers in your district. And there's what I've discovered, especially uh, first grade pops to mind. They have the same set of storybooks that they're all incorporating in their classroom, and I think they're pretty standard across the nation. So, for example, brown bear, brown bear, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Nod your head if you know what that one is. Yeah, 
pretty standard, right? So that one can actually incorporate math standards and English language art standards if you wanted it to. And it would tie into what they're using in their classroom, which make everybody happy. So in that one, I would add sticks because it's very easy to make that quarter notes and, and two eighth notes, and your kids can figure it out too. Brown bear, brown bear. Are those taws or are those tees? Can you write it? How would you write it? Brown, and then I add a melody. How could we sing it? Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? So now we have, now we can even add melody to it, and we can talk about melody and rhythm, and the kids can, what other animal could you see besides what's in there? What sticks would we need to use? And in the process, you're counting sticks, and you're also using rhyming words. You're moving from left to right, and those are all common core state standards for math and English language arts. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like heavy for Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Want to talk about anything else? <laughs> oh, so I think Lauren is here to join us. Lauren, if you um, are there, it looks like uh, you're, you have a blunt blue blob there. Go ahead and, and say hi in the chat box. And to, load, to find the chat box, you're going to hover on the left side of the screen and click on the top little, looks like a little blue rectangle with lines in it, and that'll open up your chat box. Thanks, Amanda, for uh, giving me a heads up. And Amanda, I'm not slowing down to reading your thing, so. Um, yes, it's a great advocacy tool right now. We can be proactive rather than sit back and wait for them to address it with us. That's my approach. And I think it makes our position as music teachers stronger. Um, and it, it removes us from the defensive and fighting for the arts to being proactive and being part of the team in their eyes. And, and really, it's good for kids. So that's definitely how I, I feel. Um, and administration is definitely overwhelmed. And depending on your administrator, Depending on your administrator, if he has an ego or she has an ego, and they're always trying to seem in control, there's I've met, I've worked for all kinds of administrators, and some of them had that they wanted to always pretend they had it all together, and then others were really real and a team player, and um, I, I know it's really helpful to my administrator. And in fact, if your school district is using instructional strategies. Now our school district got into adopting an instructional, instructional strategies called CRIS, that's the acronym, and infusing it in the entire system. And what it ended up being was like the 21st century skills and those questions. And the other teachers, like the math teacher, they were, they were like lost. How do I teach math this way where the way that we teach things already incorporates collaboration, creativity, having kids create things and make up things. And so um, I actually, there were times that I kind of became a leader because I was like, no, that'll work because this is what we do in music. And so I would get called on for, for that type of thing. Ah, I'm going to answer Lauren here. Um, so Lauren, I'm guessing that you can hear by what you said, and we've been on for about 30 minutes. I'm not going to bore everybody else by going through that again, so I am going to have a recorded version that you can catch the first part. Basically, I went through the common core grid of how you understand it, and then we'll all have to understand that the music bubble in that is going to shift once that comes out in, in June. So, um, all right, so I'm going to turn the tables. And uh, for you guys, oh, what is your greatest thing, greatest activity you have done this year? Something that worked, that you love, that you would love to share with the group. Just put you on the spot. Sorry, I should have given you a heads up on that one. Most of them are your ideas anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> Pizzicato <laughs> Polka was... Uh, a big hit and and then I went from there into studying the string instruments and then we did it again so they could 
they saw a video of the Vienna Orchestra do it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and there are so many, you know, and Rajana that's down here in the bottom, she's editing all those video clips, and it's a, a major task to do it. Um, but we put those up just so there'd be something, but there are so many great video clips on, on YouTube, and next year I'm going to sort through those and, like, recommend great ones. But, uh, um, you know, we're, we're working through all the technology stuff. I think we just got our lesson plan system up and running well, they're testing it tonight to make sure that it that it works, but we should be ready to roll with that again. But we ended up with a hiccup there for a little while, but we're back. So it's good. Yeah, those lesson plans are a lifesaver. Thank you. Oh, you are very welcome. Um, it's been, and Amanda, you're kind of new new to this. I just met, or Amanda just met me or whatever, like last week. I don't know. I was in San Antonio where it was 78 degrees. I know that. And I live in Iowa and it's like 12 right now. Um, so I'm freezing. What, that's the turtleneck that I have on. Um, so Amanda, if, have you had a chance to explore around the Teaching with Freddie the Frog site? I know these other three have because they've, they've been on here for a while. So um, if you click around on there, you'll find lesson plans and there are I have a, a, a goal that by the end of the following year, I'm going to keep filling in lesson plans in between the ones that you see missing. So at the end of that time, we, have, we will have a full sequence, eventually two per year, uh, two per year, two per week. And then you adju adjust it to if you only see your kids once a week or twice a week <clears throat> and key lessons. So um, at the moment, I'm just getting them done when I can and, and getting them up and then over the summer and next fall, then we'll start to fill in those gaps. So that's good. Um, so great. I'm so glad it's helping. Um, so the lesson plans, do you find, um, Annette, do you find out that the, the watching the video clips or reading through the lesson plans is more helpful than the other, or is it good to have both? It's good to have both. Um but it's really nice to see what it's really like with kids <laughs> because it's helpful to see how you handle the behavior and so I can copy that. Ah, good, good, good. That was the, that was the goal, good. Are they, are they, and Rajan and I have talked about this a lot, are they um, too short or too long? We tried to keep them short enough that you could click on and not take too much time. I think it's about right because um, you can kind of draw draw conclusions to what you did between the the clip. You know how how they were edited. You know that something you might ha go around for each kid to do an activity right. instead of just you know. I could fill in the blanks. <laughs> good, good. That's our goal. We were trying to hit that happy median. Um, I see we did it. I can share with you. Oh, Lauren, thank you. Lauren's over here typing away and I'm not reading. Uh, okay, cool. Lauren has something that she does. I have who has in King of the Hill. Oh, that's great. Um, so if you guys aren't reading the comments, something that she loves that she's gotten from Teachers Pay Teachers. Lauren, would you mind sharing those links? then I can share them with everybody else. I'll catch up with her later. Um, and Shelly, anything that's been, what's your greatest thing you've had? It's hard to pinpoint just one, but I'm new at your books. I have your books and some of your uh, flashcards, and the kids love the books, and so Good. I love going on your website and looking at the lesson plans and the videos, just like um, who was who is this that was shown Annette. for mm -hmm. Annette, um, because the kids really connect with the characters, and I have used the coloring sheets quite a bit because cool. I hope that that you know that they'll just remember the characters from week to week. I just get them once a week for 40 minutes. Yeah. So all all of the things that you prepared for us on your website are very helpful. I love the videos. Very helpful. 
Good. Okay. Well, we're going to get ready to videotape some more here in a couple months. So anything else Great. in addition that you would like to see, you know, let me know because we'll take it to heart. Okay. We're doing it for everybody. We are not, okay. not doing it for me. We're doing it for to help. So um, so that's good. Um, oh, Amanda, I love that. Amanda typed in that Freddie was at the prior school. And I had that happen a lot. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading over here. <laughs> I realized that you had Freddie's hands moving, so I had to figure that out. Um, I actually have a video clip on how to do that. Did you see that? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what she said, it's a challenge to be two people at once. It, it becomes so second nature that I forget and I start talking to Freddie or he's like on my hand and the secretary's like, okay, he is shaking his head at me. I'm like, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so it'll, yeah, it'll just come naturally and, and you'll be in something else. Um, fantastic. So you're in New Mexico. I know Lauren's in New Jersey, and then we have Bismarck. And where'd you say you were from, Shelly? I'm from Arkansas. Oh, gosh, yeah. I saw you in the summer, like a few, a year and a half ago or something. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, I'm having fun reading the comments at the side. Um, well, great. Well, I uh, yeah, anything that is of interest to you guys or that you're you're struggling with. So now here's the other tough question, and it doesn't have to be Freddie related at all. Um, what is your greatest struggle? And let me do this. This will narrow it down because what is think about that one class that you dread when it's their music day and they're going to be coming in. Okay. It's, it's just that eternal behavior question, you know. But I was reading again your your post about taming that wild class and uh -huh. wondering if, you know, should I try that tomorrow? There's just, it's so sad that most of your energy is spent on that one child, really. Right. Right. There's a defiant, uh, it's pretty defiant behavior, so I al always anticipate there's nothing that can be done about that one, you know. Right. And, and you do have, I mean, you just have to take it into account, and there's going to be, and there's so many behavior problems with kids now that we have to deal with, and, and just all kinds of variety of, of things. Um, has, well, how old is that student? That's a third grade class. That makes it a little harder. And they're kind of in that age. Um, so behavior is one of the biggest things in keeping that classroom management, keeping them all together. And do you notice that when you, I tried to make everything, there was a game and it was Freddie's idea, and then they had to do their job to play the game. And then if they didn't do their job, that one student, I would just quietly not make a big deal about it, just say, can you do your job? And if they didn't answer, well then, you know, they just sat back and, you know, I just, but they want to play the game. They want, so I always would incorporate something so fun or getting to play an instrument. And at third grade, they still want to play an instrument, something that they have to do their job. Or I would hang that carrot for the end. Um, you know, Freddie really wants to play this game, and I would set that up. Now, third grade, I'm probably not going to say that anymore because then that's, you know, that's, it, but, hey, um, let's do this, and, oh, I think we do this game at the end, because you only have them for that little brief moment. And, uh, but we can only do that if everybody does their job. And then, of course, if I'm kind of assuming what kind of kid you're talking about, but it's one of those that is so gone that he really didn't care what the rest of the, you know, if he runs it for the class. So I make it specific to each kid and, and not pen penalize the whole class. And then when we get to that, um, time, or if I need it, I might bump that game up a little sooner just to get control of the room, and then, um, and then we would start to play. And I come to that child and say, "Well, 
and pass them up. I just pass him up. I hand out instrument, instrument, and I just pass them up. And they're like, hey. I'm like, well, can you do your job? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. And then I go back and I hand them the instrument. And then the moment they mess up, just quietly, sorry. And then and a lot of times, once they know that's going to be consistent, then they're like, okay, I can do my job. Um, I had one really extreme kid, and by what you're describing, this might be a similar deal. There was absolutely no parental discipline established at home. Exactly. Right. right. All right. <clears throat> and so for this child, um, but I did know that his parents really loved him in this case, and I knew who they were. So I pulled him after class, and I just said, you know, if I was going to describe, have you describe, between 1 and 10, how well do you think you were doing your job today? And what was interesting is that kid said 10. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm, do you know what I think you was? And no, and I said, a 2. What? Well, this is what, in my room, doing your job is. And... So that's what it will have to be to get that 10 in my room. Why don't we make a chart and let's see how if you can get a 10 next time. And, and it took about three classes, but he kept getting better. And then by the end, then we, then we had a chart. It was just for him. It was just a little private thing between him and I. But it made a world of difference. Then um, he finally he, he started to understand. And I would say, okay, what do you think that was? And he would tell me his number, and I'd tell him mine, and then I'd tell him why. Or I'd ask him, well, why do you think mine was lower? And I actually had to teach him what his job was. And that actually worked. And at the end of the year, then we worked for getting 10 music classes with 10s. And at the end, I made this really cool music note and said, you know, it was like a little certificate. He made 10 music classes and 10s. I had no idea what that meant to him until his mother called me and said he brought it home and wanted it framed in on his wall. <laughs> so, you know, you just got to work with each one. But that was something that did work for me, and I don't know him. So, um, all right, so Lauren has a whole thing over here about how to get those. I will copy-paste that into an email so you guys have the suggestions that she had. Thanks, Lauren. Um, Shelly, about you, any any struggles or your biggest struggle or your biggest class that you always dread? Well, you just helped me with it. I actually pulled five guys out of a fifth grade class on Friday when I realized they were the culprits that were keeping their entire class from focusing and mm -hmm. the others went on out to recess, and I kept them, and I'm going to have them. I, I gave them each a D-Hall, and I'm going to be their D-Hall teacher for four days in a row this next week. And so I'm looking for, I told them we're going to have a little character education. <laughs> <laughs> but I want it to be super different, something totally unexpected yeah. for them. Because there, it's just disrespect, and a right. lot of it is, you know, they've just got struggles. And so uh, at home and everywhere. So I just want, I'm, I'm thinking while you're talking about this, that example of throwing them off, letting them do their job. And then I only get them for 10 minutes right. each, I mean, for, for this discipline session every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking uh, bringing some drums in and letting them just do their job of whatever the mini lesson will be, and then they get a turn on the drums or, or something like that, something they might enjoy, maybe garage band or something like that. Yeah, that's tricky because you don't want to make it too fun since it's supposed to be detention. In, right. In <laughs> well, they have to do their job first, whatever it's going to be Yeah. in that session. The first five minutes would be, or six minutes would be, something not fun and a lesson. Yeah. And with them, you may have to start with a shorter time period of not fun because they're not going to quite get it. Right. Um, and the other thing that I did, and, and I had, I know what you're trying to say, this little posse, 
and you can kind of see that they're the cool guys because they, they build confidence in that the other four are willing to do this and mm -hmm. and they you know they're in their own little world um, so w something that I did I was I was pretty firm I just didn't uh, you know I had no tolerance for that we'd have a blast and then once they crossed that line it was like hmm so I would pull them uh, actually one by one because you get a more honest response and they don't have to be cool for their buddy and I would ask you know okay why do you think you're here um, you know the typical what did what did you do what is doing your job can you make that change and here's the deal if you cannot handle taking control of this and doing your job in my class, then my next step is that I'm calling your home, your parents or whomever that is, and I'm going to ask them what we can do. And then I would do it. I would do it before the end of that day, so it happened before they got home. And just the fact that I followed through and called their parents or the grandparents would uh, that in itself sometimes would do it. Now a lot of times I would call his parents and I'm guessing this might be true in your situation as well. And I would always say, you know, hi Mrs. Jones, um, I'm Mrs. Birch, the music teacher, and I just want to call you because I know that if this was my son or daughter I would really want this call. I was curious, um, so you know, Johnny has not been respectful, they're not going to get the doing your job thing. Um, he's not been respectful. He's been doing this, this, and this, and it, it just it needs to stop. And I wondered if you had something that works at home that I could try at school. And that way I didn't put them on the defensive. It was like I was asking them to be my partner, and I was asking them for advice. And a lot of times they would come right back at me, and they would go, oh, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what to do with them, you know, which was fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say, hmm, all right, well, I'm going uh, I'm gonna to work on a strategy to help, help Johnny do his job, and if you would just let him know that I called and, and be willing to, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing, and, um, and if we can work together, that would be great. And I had, had two students over 21 years where that still wasn't working, and, but the parent was willing to come to school. And so I said, would you be willing to come to class and watch, or, or you know, be there, and we'll work together to correct this? And especially for a fifth grader, that's super embarrassing. So I did not surprise the student on it. I would just say, well, here's the deal. You still weren't able to do your job. So I have talked to your parents. We have come up with a plan. We're going to see if we get this goal. If it continues the next time, then they're going to come join your music class and just sit by you to help. I like that. I can use that. And that that pretty well took care of it, you know. <laughs> sure. Now, I had to continue to do my job because if my lessons were not engaging enough, then you know, there's this line. It's really up to me to make my lessons so engaging and everybody's involved that they don't get bored and that they feel that challenge and that they're engaged. Mm -hmm. So that's my part that I'm trying to do. But then there's those kids that have crossed the line or now they're not even there because when they enter your room, all they're thinking about is how can, what can we get away with today? Mm -hmm. So you have to cross you have to regain that control by doing something like that and then I have to do my part to make sure that class is really on top of things and moving from one thing to the next and challenging them at their level. So That's good, thank you. Yeah, helpful? Alright, well um, I can't believe that hour flew by. Um, any, any other burning questions or comments or something or before we sign off, that piece about doing doing your part, Freddie's mirror game helps me get the attention of the class. And uh, what's what's the drum telling you to do? You know that ta 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 and things like that. Or the Freddie's tempo game. Th those are nice little brain breaks, also. 
Right. Good. 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 And what age level are you teaching, um, Annette? It's K six. Okay. So you have that gamut. Um, and how did you just start using Freddie this year? Yes. So how far up have you went with Freddie? I uh, I sh I sh told, showed the books to the fifth and sixth graders, but we're doing more world music drumming. Uh, with uh -huh. fifth and sixth, and up yeah. to the fourth grade, pretty intense. I mean, all the stuff that you've taught. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And I'm guessing world uh, the drumming at fifth and sixth is a perfect fit. Yeah, that's it yeah. works well. It keeps them really engaged in there. Yeah, that's I would do that as well. Um, yeah, and let's see, Lauren, I try to monitor over here. Ah, cool. You're able to. Leave your subs some great stuff. Good. I know. I hate leaving it with a movie. Um, and anything else from Amanda or Shelly? Okay, cool. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, try to go out so we can dance or play games. It doesn't matter. Or from percussion instrument. Hey, you know, um, Amanda, I traveled between five buildings and taught from a cart, so I get it. And um, you just, I mean, you're, I'm sure you're already doing it. I just would, I would still do orphan percussion, but I would do it a very really limited way. I had a, uh, I had a set of classroom instruments that stayed on the cart at every building. I built up to that, and I had a set of tw uh, 12, 12, 21 different classrooms. I tried to do. My largest classroom, so if I had 30 kids in my classroom, I'd have 15 glockenspiels in those plastic cases, and those lived on the cart at every building. In the beginning, I traveled with them, and then I built that up. That at least allowed me to do pitched um, teaching with them, and even though the sound was as, wasn't as great as having true ORF instrumentation, the processing and the learning of hearing the pitches and being able to play so me and Joe and incorporate that was still doable with the combination of those and that classroom set of instruments. And I actually preferred to not have an instrument in everybody's hand at all times. There's classroom management in having every other one or every third one because the person waiting is having to do that in their hand, body percussion, and they have to do their job in order to get to play the instrument. If they all have the instrument, you lose a little bit of control. If that, yeah, and they're a little bit more focused on doing what they should do instead of just playing whatever they want. So that that really helped. Um, so it is doable. I, I I made it through a lot of rolling suitcases. I had to buy one about once a year. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, Shelly, anything else from you? You've been very helpful. I've got a bunch of notes I've just written down. So. <laughs> That's good for now. Thank you. All right. Well, that sounds good. I, I think I will probably change from the Tuesdays to the Sunday afternoon. I think from the response I got, that's a better time for people. Um, my folks in Australia was hoping I'd do it on Saturday, but I think that would be a worse day for most people. Would you agree? In the States, because typically we plan lots of things on Saturdays. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll try that. And uh, and we'll see. But I'm so glad you can come. And now you know how to get connected on. And so next time it will be a lot easier. And you'll already be in. And uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.